Hi everyone, welcome back to the Napoleonic Stacking channel. I'm the Napoleonic Stacker, and in this video I'm going to showcase some gold francs from Napoleon's era. Starting with this nice 20 franc piece, this is a this is what we call a gold Napoleon. And in 1802, Napoleon declared himself first consul for life. He established a new constitution laying out a succession for rule for his future sons. That year in 1802 uh, was the first year the gold Napoleon was actually issued. Uh, the gold Napoleon carries a 20 franc denomination and it actually consists of 0.1867 troy ounces of gold. It has a 21 millimeter diameter, only a bit smaller than a traditional U.S. quarter. Um, based on our research, the gold Napoleon was the equivalent of around eight days wages for a common laborer, uh, roughly the same as four U.S. dollars at the time. Now, with this coin, you can see Napoleon, he's got the, the crown, the laurels with the gold leaves. This is the image that he wanted to portray from when he actually was crowned emperor. And down below, you can see it has a, let's see if we can get it in there. You can see down below here, that's actually the initials of the engraver, which is Jean-Pierre Droz. And he's famous for uh, basically engraving the, the gold Napoleon. And you can see here on the, the side here, it says Napoleon. And then it says Emperor. And on the back, you can see here, it shows Empire of France. And the 20 francs is flanked by the gold laurels. And you can also see the Gallic rooster here, which is a, a historic symbol of, of France, and in particular of Paris. And you can see the date, 1811. Um, a indicates the mint mark. That's uh, That shows where it was struck. And this coin was actually struck in Paris. So Napoleon himself could have actually handled this coin. If I can get into focus here. Now, 1811 was actually a good year for Napoleon. His son was born that year. Um, he was master over most of Europe. And... Uh, Everything seemed to be going Napoleon's way. And that was up until 1812 when he began his campaign against Russia. And as we know, the, the campaign in Russia went terribly. He lost the majority of the Grand Armée and uh, his, his enemies in Austria and Prussia, who he had defeated, um, have now been emboldened to, uh, to basically strike against Napoleon for all of his grievances um, that he's, he's done against their country. Now, this Napoleon here, you can see this is a circulated Napoleon, and very similar to the one I just showed you, but this is in uh, circulated condition, and it's struck in 1814. Now, this is struck from the same mint, the Paris mint. It's got the Gallic rooster here. But 1814 um, was the last year that the, well, I, sh I should say, uh, one of the last years the Napoleons were struck because it was only struck for four months that year because Napoleon abdicated um, early in the year. And after the Bourbon Restoration with King Louis XVIII, um, Louis XVIII took many of these coins and melted them down because he absolutely hated Napoleon. He hated the emperor. So the gold Napoleons, even though some of the, um, the dates from around 1807 through 1812, there's, there's quite a few that were actually struck and minted. Um, many of these were melted down and restruck with the king's face. Now, in 1815, Napoleon uh, retook his throne for 100 days, and that's considered the 100-day you know, uh, restoration of Napoleon. And during that time, for about three months, the gold Napoleons were struck once again uh, with the 1815 date. Um, I do not have any of the 1815s. Um, and then later, Napoleon III ended up becoming emperor after um, a lot of a lot of hubaloo. Um, <laughs> he was he was considered kind of a joke for the most part, but um, eventually the French came to respect him and put him into a place of authority, and he declared himself emperor. 
And in the same vein of Na Napoleon the uh, the first, he was wanting to be um, a great emperor, a great military conqueror, and you know, unfortunately, it didn't really pan out for him, uh, or unfortunately. But one of the things that Napoleon the third standardized, um, he partnered with several other countries in Europe to put together the Latin Monetary Union. And the Latin Monetary Union was based around the 20 franc piece gold Napoleon, um, among other uh, standards of, of France. Um, so you have Belgium, you've got Switzerland, you've got Italy, uh, you've got the, the Papal States, um, France, of course, all going along with the, uh, the standards of weights and measurements for gold and silver. And of course, um, France's enemies in, in Prussia and Germany, um, and also in, in Austria, uh, didn't want to go along with this standard. So they have their own weights and measurements for gold. And um, even the countries, there were several countries that didn't enter into the treaty officially, but still tr struck their um, their gold and silver pieces with the same consistent weight um, as the French did. And basically that, that became the euro before the euro. Most countries that were in the Latin Monetary Union ended up not leaving it until the, um, the start of World War I, when basically most of those countries went off of a gold standard. But even then, countries like France and countries like um, Switzerland continued making restrikes of some of their most popular coins. And uh, this here, this is a French rooster from, I believe, the, the Third Republic of France. And this is a coin that's actually, even though it says um, 19, 1910 on it, um, is, is actually a modern restrike. And uh, we, we see this with um, several popular um, bullion coins throughout Europe. So they, they still keep the spirit of the, the 20 franc piece and the, the Latin Monetary Union um, alive. The, the gold Napoleons, I absolutely adore, um, primarily because it's a, it's a piece of history from Napoleon's era. Um, as I said earlier, he, he could have used these coins, he could have handled them, and uh, you know clearly some of them have been circulated like the 1814 here. And just the history behind it, who used this coin, um, how did it circulate, what, were, what was going on in the lives of the people that, that used this. Um, they did circulate, although many of them did end up in banks where they didn't get touched, kind of like this one here. This is in AU condition. Um, you can kind of see the luster there, but this is one. This is an example that if it saw circulation, it saw very little circulation, and it's a really good example of what a gold Napoleon should look like. If you like what you see, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, the, the coin that you see in the intro is actually a gold double Napoleon. So it's a 40 franc piece. It's uh, twice the size of what you just saw. And it's one of my most prized possessions. If you'd like for me to review my 40 franc gold Napoleon, uh, please, uh, please leave a comment in the comment section and uh, we'll do that for a future video. Uh, I also plan to do many more gold videos going forward to showcase some of the things that I've picked up why I collect it, um, and so forth. You know, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section or feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my contact information is in the description below. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. Napoleonic Stacker, signing out.